This is part two of a three-part series on form submission issues we found in Elementor. In it we'll cover troubleshooting method we use to find the underlying cause of the problem, prep work needed to create a table in our database to use in place of submissions. And in the third part of the series we'll show you how to create the hooks to write to that table from your form. In our previous video, we showed the form we had and how the submissions that were sent from that form in our submissions page uh, had all of these missing fields. And we went over a little bit of, of why or which ones were missing. We sent the form successfully. We're using uh, Web Inspector. And if we look at the uh, X. HR, the file with the AJAX information in it, we can see that, look at some of the other fields on here, and the one thing we notice right away is that uh, the ticket amount is here, the stripe amount is here, special needs is here, but look at these field names. They're just the name as they appeared in our HTML. But when we come down to here, special needs, this is the uh, name that Elementor provides. And Elementor names always have these, uh, the form fields. And then the name that you gave it is inside of brackets, but it appends or pre does a prefix of form fields. So all of the Elementor fields, the non-HTML input fields, have form fields on them, where the HTML input fields don't. If we pull up what Elementor had in its submissions and compare it to what the form has, we can see that the selected ticket has the 25, the stripe amount has the 25, special needs has yes, but here ticket amount and stripe amount are missing and special needs is missing. So we see it's only till we get to the Elementor fields ones that have the form fields prefix that we started capturing data to submissions. So ramp access please was captured. Uh, the options, selections, first, last name, and email. Those were all fields that have the Elementor forms fields prefix on them. And those are captured. But the ones without are not. Or that's the problem with the Elementor. It doesn't capture the HTML fields, input fields. Let's take a look at comparison table. Here's the issue. Our submission form has 25 fields on it. Unfortunately, there's only seven fields showing up. Our widget has the corresponding 25 fields. But the problem is that some of these are like available tickets. That's a step field. Uh, ticket choices. That's a HTML heading. Uh, some of the others are just informational. HTML info text like the phone instructions. So we don't want those. But it's bringing all 25 of these fields back even though it's not populating them all. Now the second part of the issue is that a lot of our input fields, there should be 13 input fields, we're only seeing 7. And the reason we're missing some is because they're HTML input fields. We created them. And Elementor doesn't see them when it sends fields to the submission form. We have 25 fields of which only 13 are actual data we want. Now when Elementor gets to addressing our request, 
to allow us to limit submissions to only fields we want, that will correct half the problem, or half of our problem. Then we won't be storing or showing useless information. That said, we still need, though, to capture important information from the six HTML additional input fields we created, over the seven that Elementor does capture. To address both of these issues, it's technically possible to modify Elementor's submission code. But for now, or in my opinion, it's easier and better to just create a table in our database that is used just for storing our input fields, the ones that we want to capture. It isn't that difficult to create a table uh, that you can use, but we're not going to go into all the ins and outs of creating the table. There's plenty of videos on that. We do want to cover some of the stuff that's important that you should do, and that's know what you're going to put into your table ahead of time. So we have 13 fields, and we need to make sure that we know the name that we're going to use in the table, the type they're going to be, what their default value is, and any attributes they may have. Uh, we also want to need, know if there's any special extra fields that we're going to add. In our case, there's uh, three. We want an ID, number, uh, a key value. We want to know what the form they came from was and the name for that form. The standard technique for adding a table to a WordPress database is using MyPHPAdmin, which can easily add uh, to a MySQL database. We're not going to go through that whole process here. There's other videos. We're just going to show you the finished product. Okay, so we've created our concert tickets database table. We have our ID which is an auto increment integer. Uh, then we have our form ID, which we're also using an integer. Form name, var car, type ticket, var car. And then for the ticket amount and the stripe amount, we're using decimal 10 with two place uh, decimal points. And they're on, all of our numeric ones are unsigned. And then we have the rest of our fields. Uh, we have tiny ints that we've pre-assigned a value of uh, 1 for yes or true or 0 for uh, false or no. These are for our checkboxes. And then for the rest of our fields, uh, there are VARC chars. Or, uh, the only other one is a uh, date purchase, which is a date timestamp that we've given a precision of 2. The fields that are Elementor fields, we've named exactly the same as they are for the ID in Elementor on the Forms widget because Elementor is going to scrub off that Forms field and it's going to take the name that's inside the brackets. So you want the names in your table to be the same unless you want to go through redefining them. I mean, you can do that. And actually, it will show you because the HTML fields that Elementor doesn't bring through this correctly for us, we need to define those. So we could choose the name, but we did keep the names the same as the names we used in the uh, form just for uh, clarity. And uh, that's all we're going to show here. I mean, we can show you more in another video, or uh, please watch somebody else's video. I'm sure they've done a lot better job than we have if you want to learn more about the SQL and building a table. That concludes part two of our three-part series uh, on Elementor's form submissions and the problem we have with it and fixing it. In the third part, we'll show how we used one of Elementor's built-in hooks to capture form data and write it to the database table here. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you can, subscribe. That helps, I guess. Take care.